Welcome to this tutorial on how to set up the Planetary Processing Multiplayer SDK in Unity. Let's start by opening the Unity Hub and creating a new project. We are going to use the 3D Render Pipeline for this tutorial, but it would also work with the other templates Unity provides. The new project will need access to the Planetary Processing SDK. From the top bar, select Window and open the Package Manager. Click the plus symbol and add the Planetary Processing Unity SDK using the Git URL. When you click Add, it will install automatically and show in the Package Manager. Now that the SDK is installed, let's create an empty object to handle our connection to the game server. Add the PP Master component to the Server Connection Game object. This will pass information to the server about the main player character, the entities, and which game to connect to. Next, create a Cube Game object to act as our player. To distinguish between this client and other player clients, we're going to call our player in this scene main character. Add the PP entity component to the main character to mark it as an object which will be visible to the game server. Return to the server connection game object and drag and drop the main character into the player parameter. Next, we'll make some actual entities to populate our world. Create a sphere to act as the basis for our cat entity. It needs the PP entity component and also needs to have its type defined. In this case, it is a cat. We define a type because, unlike the main character, there can be more than one cat in the world. For this same reason, we're going to turn our cat into a prefab. Prefabs can be made by dragging and dropping objects from the hierarchy into the Assets panel. A prefab contains all the information about the cat sphere and allows us to clone it repeatedly. We'll use a capsule to represent other players in the game. Unlike the main character, these do need an entity type, player. To connect to the demo game server, we need three types of entities. Cats, trees, and other players. Entity types are defined by the names of Lua files inside the server-side demo code. We'll be looking at these entity Lua files later in the video. Once we have all our entities converted into prefabs, you must delete them from the scene itself, so that they only exist as assets. To register our entities, open the server connection game object, then lock the panel. This makes it easier to drag and drop our entity prefabs from the asset panel into the list of prefabs in the PP master component. The game ID parameter will help you connect to the game server. It can be found on the planetary processing website in the game section of the dashboard. To use the data stored in the master component, we need to create a C-sharp script and add it to the server connection game object. Make sure we're using the planetary package. In the start function of your script, get the master component as a variable and use it to call the init and join functions. The init function authorizes your connection. The join function loads the player into the game world. The init function has two parameters, one for the player's username and another for their password, or these can be left blank for an anonymous connection. We are going to leave them blank, but in order to do so, we must warn our game server. Anonymous authentication is off by default, so go to your game dashboard on the planetary processing website and change the settings to enable it. If you want to test with a username and password instead, go to the Player Management section and create a player. Launch your game from the dashboard. Preloaded server-side demo code will start to run and you can observe your game world from the dashboard map. Since we have our player, entities and connection script prepared, we can also launch the Unity preview to join and observe from a player perspective. If we swap from game view to scene view, we can get a better look at our world. If we zoom out a little more, we see a bird's eye view very similar to the game dashboard map, with chunks loading in a roughly 3x3 grid around the player. But we probably want to do a little more than just observe. Let's create a player movement script to start interacting with our world. Attach the script you've made to the main character object. Then open it up so we can edit it. Make sure you are using the planetary package. 
Since it is unlikely to change, we're going to serialize the server connection game object, so we can easily drag and drop it in the inspector. As before, we get the PP master component from the server connection game object at the start of processing. We get our inputs much like a normal movement script. Here we use the axes inputs for simple WASD or joystick controls. Multiply it by the frame lag time and speed to give our player consistent positional changes. Then, instead of changing our cube's position directly, we use our master component variable to send these changes to the game server. In Unity, we use a dictionary as our parameter, which corresponds to a Lua table in the server-side game code. Save your script and return to Unity. We serialize the server connection game object variable, so it must be dragged and dropped into the player movement script's parameters. Launch up again and our player can move. As you move, the world will generate chunks around you, as if you're on a treadmill. Chunks currently not in use or without an entity chunk loader will despawn to save on resources. To better follow our player, we can set the camera to be a child object the main character. Since the viewport is only on the client side, we don't need to add any additional components. We can also make other simple client side alterations to improve our game. We can make a plane to be the floor of our world. We'll scale it up and center it and adjust its position slightly. The floor isn't an entity, as defined by our server-side demo code, so it doesn't need a prefab or an entity component. Then we can start adding some textures and colors to our world. Unity uses materials to define how game objects appear. We are simply going to change the albedo parameter to a flat color. You could drag and drop a PNG or other image file in instead of a color. Copy and paste quickly creates material for our entities and the floor, and set colors for each. Then just drag and drop them into our prefabs and game objects, replacing the default material. Hit play, and we have a nice colorful world. Our main character cube is still white, but other players joining would appear as blue capsules. If you wanted to, you could adjust the game dashboard map to show matching colors and icons by going to the Entity section of the Game Settings. To make some proper changes to our server-side game code, we can download the Git repository containing the demo code from the URL on our game dashboard. To do this, search for a terminal or equivalent on your computer. Then navigate to where you want to store your game, using the command cd followed by the path to that folder. Once you're there, use the command git clone followed by your repository URL to duplicate the game's backend from the server. Then use the cd command again, followed by the name of your game folder, to navigate the terminal inside of it. If we display this visually, we see the demo game repository will have a hidden .git folder for managing version history, an init Lua file, and another folder for entity Lua files. The name of each file in our entity folder corresponds directly to the entity types we use in each of our entity components. So our cat sphere had the type cat to match the cat.lua file. We are going to create a new entity by duplicating the cat file to make a dog entity. To spawn this entity in the world, we will need to make an adjustment to our init file. The init file handles trunk loading. We just want to set the dog entity to spawn in the same way as the cat. Dog spawn encode does the following. When the first trunk hasn't been generated, create 20 dogs at the coordinates minus 35, 25, 0, and give them each a name followed by a number from 1 to 20. Save this change and return to the terminal to start uploading new code to the game server. Use the command git add capital A to add all of your changes to staging. Staging gives you a chance to review your code before you proceed, so let's use the command git status to check we have all the correct files. We can see our new dog file and our chunks modified init file. So it looks like we can safely record our change in the game's version history and log it with a memorable message using git commit m. Now we just need to upload the changes from our clone back to the original repository using git push. For these changes to take effect, I'm going to stop the game, then use deploy latest changes to synchronize our game server with the changes we made. Deploying the latest changes will automatically stop the game server for a brief time, then restart it. 
I stopped it manually because I'm also going to reset the simulation state from the settings. This would not normally be necessary for deploying changes, but I'm using it as a quick way of regenerating the first chunk to provoke the dog spawning. If we restart our game server, we can see both cats and dogs now roaming the world. However, if we logged in as the player now, we wouldn't see any dogs, because we have not defined them on the client side. In Unity, duplicate the cat prefab. Name it something, also set its entity type to dog to match the dog.lua file. Update the material, and more importantly, add the dog prefab to the list in the master component of the server connection game object. When we launch our Unity client, we can see our new entity in the world. To make more changes to your trunk and entity behavior, simply edit your clone files however you wish, ensuring that the entities in your Unity project and the game repo always match. Thanks for watching this tutorial on how to integrate Unity with the planetary processing platform. Our documentation has more details on how to start crafting your game world. If you want to stay up to date on everything we do or need help, check out our Discord.